friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 14th, and it is a bright sunny morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania, although there are threats of thunderstorms all day. We'll see what might uh, precipitate, no pun intended. Ah, so I am enjoying a pipe, which last week I didn't know if I would be, so <laughs> we'll talk more about that. I'll bring you up to date on all the good doctor stuff. I need to find my tamper. And, uh, yeah, so we'll go through all that. I don't have an agenda for today except to say that, you know, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Uh, not everything is fine, but the important things are all fine. So that, that's where we're at right now. So, first off, I want to say I made that video last week talking about my... Uh, uh, my the finding with my uh, echocardiogram and uh, the worries I had about it, the potential uh, need to eliminate smoking or, or dramatically cut back on smoking. And uh, I didn't smoke a pipe last weekend. Uh, I had one on Friday night during the live stream, and I had two actually on Friday night during the live stream. And that was it. I did not touch another pipe until Friday night, the live stream again. And the reason I picked them up again is that my doctor got in touch with me after reviewing everything and said, it's, and I'm quoting here, unremarkable. Um, you know, given my age and everything, it's perfectly normal what's going on. And uh, they say, monitor, which I'm doing. I see a cardiologist regularly and have for years. And uh, yeah, we're fine. So... Does that mean I jump back into six to eight bowls a day? I decided no. And it's for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is, you know, I'll be honest, one is health related, but it's not it's not the driving force. So, you know, pipe smoking is a whole lot better for you than cigarette smoking. <clears throat> but it's not good for you. Right? I mean, everybody knows that we do this at our own risk and that there is definitely some detriment because you're, you're loading your body with nicotine and you're putting nicotine into your bloodstream you're not supposed to have nicotine in your bloodstream but there's a lot of things we're not supposed to have in our bloodstream <laughs> and we put them in there you know we're not supposed to have alcohol there and we, and we do caffeine so you know yes there are there are health risks associated with it there are health risks associated with coffee and and many other things So that's part of the reason to, to cut back, but it's not the, the driving force. The driving force for me was that I would come down here to get something done. Let's just say I was going to work on a, a pipe or you know, yeah, I had a woodworking project going or something. First thing I did before I even looked at the work I was doing, the first thing I would do would be load a pipe, light it, and then look. Uh, working on a stem over here, got to have a pipe lit. Uh, working on the lathe, I've got a pipe lit. It's not, and by the way, not with not the wood lathe, because with the wood lathe, I wear the full face mask, so I haven't yet cut the hole for the pipe. Just kidding. So it's not, because you can't, because the smoke stays in the thing. Uh, it's not, I don't want to be controlled by something else. You know, I don't want to have even a habit. It's not an addiction, because I don't seem to have a nicotine addiction. But I don't want a habit to control me. I want to be able to make decisions for myself. And when something becomes so ingrained in the day-to-day, -day, that bothers me. Now, on the other hand, I do like my routines. So I'm not, I'm not uh, somebody that likes to dramatically change things. But this seemed like something that needed to be changed. <clears throat> so... I went a full week with nothing, and it was fine. Uh, there were a couple of times, I never got any cravings or anything, but interestingly, there were a couple of times when I just really missed having a pipe in my hand. Uh, the most notable being when I was working, doing my day job work on the computer, sitting here at the desk, and actually trying to think and process information. That's when I really wanted it. Um, but never had any sort of physiological response. And 
when I had those first pipes on Friday night after the week break, people asked me, did it, did it taste better? It didn't taste better, really, or all that different, but it was different. It was more, my palate was rested. I was better able to pick out different components and things like that. I hadn't realized how much I had sort of dulled my palate. So that's where I'm at right now. Now, if you're a six to eight bowl a day smoker or a 10 to 12 bowl a day smoker or anything, that's fine. I'm not, you guys hopefully know me by now. I, I don't believe there's a right way to do this. I just think you do what works for you. And for a long time, what worked for me was what I described. But now I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So I had the two bowls on Friday night with the uh, the live stream. Last night I had a bowl while I was um, watching a movie. And now this one this morning. Might go to one a day, maybe two a day, maybe two a day on weekends, one a day during the I don't know. Maybe there'll probably be days where I don't. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. By the way, this is a Tim West and uh, very, very nice pipe. I don't know. Is that a Canadian lumberman? Um, or the other oval shank billiard and it contains the tobacco of the month which is Cornell and Deal's Burley Flake number one from 2017 actually and I will be talking about this in detail probably next week I wanted to have a few more passes before I said anything about it and it's going to be a lot harder to get through the tobaccos of the month now just because of smoking frequency, but I hope I'll be able to give you a more nuanced uh, impression because I'll be better able to taste it. Um, I wanted to say uh, a thank you to everybody that uh, reached out after that last video. And I was humbled by that. You know, I, I really, I just wanted to let you all know what was going on and, and vent a little bit. I was not expecting the outpouring of, uh, I'm just going to call it love. I mean, I know that word makes guys uncomfortable sometimes, but, but that's what was there. You know, it was people really expressing that they cared for me and that they, they, uh, understood. And, you know, people saying things like, I, I'll watch you without a pipe. You know, that's, that means a lot. And, um, yeah, it, it, it was, it was just very, heartwarming to read all those responses. It made me feel really good, and I thank you for that. Not what I was angling for. I wasn't trying to do anything clickbaity or anything like that. My wife taught me that word, clickbait. Yeah. I just made it into a uh, an adjective. No, an adverb. Shouldn't do that. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for that. Also, thank you for your prayers, and thank you for your continued prayers from both my father-in-law and my brother. They are both doing okay. My father-in-law came home from his hospital stay yesterday, and, uh, you know, he's he's okay. Um, given his age and everything, he's probably where he's going to be, uh, but stable, and that's a good thing. My brother, I don't know what's going on with him. He He's okay, too, and we are getting him a second opinion, but they wanted us to get another biopsy before the second opinion, which he went in for. And if you're not up on the story, they told him, um, there's nothing more we can do for you. You know, just go home and have palliative care. But we're going to get a second opinion, so they wanted to do another biopsy. And the surgeon that took the biopsy, that's the same surgeon that said, there's nothing more we can do for you, said, well, you're looking really great. Well, hopefully we'll get some information from this and we'll be able to come up with a treatment plan. This being the biopsy. How do you... I, I don't know. How do you tell somebody you go home and die and then a week later say, hey, you're looking great. Let's let's treat this. Uh, so we're getting that second opinion regardless. But so I don't know what's going on with him. You know, he might be fine. He might be in dire straits. I just don't know. He's in good spirits. He's happy. Uh, I'll be talking to him this afternoon. So, yeah, keep praying for him. Keep praying for my father-in-law. Uh, and pray for everybody. Pray, pray for the whole community. And for the love of God, pray for the world. 
Pray for the people you don't like. Pray for the people you do like. Ah, we need it. There's stuff going on right now that a big part of me wants to talk about, but those aren't the reasons you watch me. And uh, and I know somebody's going to say, oh, you can talk about whatever you want, or oh, I, I wish you would have talked about it. No, I, I, I get it. And, you know, if, if we if, if we met up somewhere and, and had a chat about it, sure. But not, not on a form like this. That's not the point of this. The prayer is important. We need... I'm sorry to my atheist friends, but I'm going to just come out and say it. We need... God and we need God to become a bigger part of our lives if we're going to survive maybe the next hundred years. I'll be gone, but we got to go back. We got to stop the nonsense. We got to go back to basics. And uh, yeah, we need faith to do that. So, with that, what's on the agenda for today? Um, so I already did some gardening. It's a bit later than it's supposed to be, but I had to bring in uh, some some stuff from the garden. I uh, got the last of our spring mix uh, salad greens. And so every time you, I look at those, I think, oh, okay, there's probably enough there for a salad, and I bring it in, and I wash it, and salad spin it and everything. And I, I've got enough salad greens for a week at least. It's amazing how much you get off of those plants. They're done now, so I'm going to probably replace them with some arugula. I like arugula. Uh, although I've tried to grow it in a couple different spots now, and the darn rabbits seem to like it this year. Uh, and they have destroyed our beans. I, we cannot grow beans. It's, it's, and, and the sad thing is they leave these little stumps, and every time, it's like they're they're grooming them, like, like they'll leave enough green on it so that it can survive. And these poor little things are actually starting to make flowers and stuff. It's, it's pathetic. Uh, yeah, so it's been a 50-50 year for the garden. But uh, plenty of salad greens, some arugula, plenty of peppers, shishito peppers and uh, banana peppers. So I'm a happy guy. I like peppers. Anyway. I did that this morning. Uh, this afternoon, I might take a ride up to Woodcraft. They've got uh, a sale going on on walnut, which I just happen to need a piece of walnut. Not a lot. I got some black walnut, but I need some non-black walnut. I don't know. I don't know walnut that well. I just know I need a piece that's not as dark as what I've got in stock. And uh, yeah, I'm starting to babble, so. Let me let you go. Uh, let's just say I got stuff to do. And uh, maybe I'll tell you about some of that next week. All right, folks. So uh, Friday night live stream, 99% chance that's going to happen. I, I keep it open because I don't know what's going to happen with my brother. But you know, we'll, we'll just keep keep it as a, a high probability and watch for the, the announcement, which will usually come out on Thursday. Uh, fr so Friday night live stream back next Sunday with more fun. Maybe I'll talk some more about the uh, early flake number one, which I all I will say right now is that I highly recommend it. Uh, I've had it before, great blend, but man, if you can get it with uh, eight or nine years on it, excellent. Oh, you get off and have yourself a fantastic Sunday. And uh, I hope you're all looking forward to a very good week ahead. Until we meet again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.